everyone i am here with a really good friend of mine also a client of mine someone that i met uh, quite a few years ago mr eight brady years. george yeah we met eight years ago right that's right eight years ago yeah yeah uh, as always when i first started interviewing people my whole reason for doing it was because i i love sharing anything if anything my whole career is just sharing stuff that's worked for me i love sharing it with people one-to-one -one. i love sharing it on social media i love sharing it on stages but the reason why i've always interviewed people is to bring you inspirational stories from inspirational people and brady is an inspirational person even though i know he's going to disagree with me probably or he's thinking right now oh really am i that inspiring but dude you just are you just are. You're a legend uh, of a of a, a family man, a heart leader, and now an athlete as well. How does it feel to say that you're an athlete? Yeah, un un well, uncomfortable. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I've had I've had, I've had, you know, I've had stages of my life where you know I've been extremely extremely active, but to label yourself as something and to take on an Ironman triath triathlon sign up yeah. in and go, go at it, no holds barred. So um, to, to give you some co context, when I work with someone one-to-one, -one, it's not a rule, but it's kind of an unwritten rule that if we're going to go on a journey together, because I'm very much a student when I work, the type of clients that I work with one-to-one, -one, I'm learning from you all the time. You know, I'm learning from people that I work with, and that's a conscious decision. I ask myself, does this person inspire me? Do they give me energy and do I want to spend three months to a year or two and a half years with this person? Uh, so what I do is as an unwritten rule, I say, let's do something as a stretch goal that forces you to become a different person, forces you to become a different person. So it has to be really, really uncomfortable. So I've, I've done people, I've done people, I've helped people with a 10K run. It might have been uncomfortable for them. A boxing match, a Muay Thai boxing match. Uh, charity treks uh, the three peaks in 24 hours and I've also helped people with uh, with triathlons and half Ironman distance triathlons and I've even helped people with full Ironman distance triathlons and w what did you choose full distance Ironman triathlon. full distance Ironman so how um, first of all being willing to do that that's inspiring in itself like how do you I'm asking you this on camera because I, I kind of want to put you on the spot. How did it feel after we had the discussion to say that you know, you're going to do this and you obviously, I think we discussed even a half and you said, no, fuck this. If I'm going to do this, I'm going in all the way, yep. which is literally your DNA. Yep. Like That's part of why I, I think about you the way that I do. But how did you f feel afterwards when you signed the dotted line, so to speak? Part of me was um, felt empowered and seriously shit scared. <laughs> to be to be to be to be to be perfectly honest, and like you said, I'm I'm, I'm pretty binary. I'm yes, no, on, off. Mm. You know, all in or 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 not at all. So the person I am. Or was then, you know, you know, absolutely no way could I have competed in a in a full distance Ironman. I've, you know, I've, the, the furthest distance I've ever competed in was was a ten mile fell run um, for a military event ten years ago. Mm. So, so to, to to sign up and commit to something of that scale and magnitude, yeah. But do you know what? You know, it's it's it's, it's like anything in life. You you get out. You get what you put in, yeah, and I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer. If you're gonna, if you're gonna go something, you've got to go in whole hog plus the plus the postage. And I knew it was going to be yeah. a complete reinvention, and, and, and not just physically, but you know, it's a, an Iron Man's a seriously spiritual spiritual journey. So uh, to let people know what an Iron, well, you can share it. As you can have the pleasure of okay. sharing it, right? Because I wanted to help <clears throat> with your certainty for this this race. What is an Ironman? It's a triathlon, but okay. So it's a it's a, it's a two point four four open water swim, a hundred and twelve mile um, bike ride, mm -hmm. and then a full marathon, back to back. Um, so for people that work in kilometers, it's like almost a four kilometer swim. You jump straight out of the water. You hop on a bicycle for the next five, six, seven, eight hours, depending on your fitness level, to do a hundred and eighty kilometers, and then you put your running shoes on and you run a marathon. 
uh, it is absolutely crazy but that's why it is honestly one of the greatest goals you can ever set yourself because you cannot not become a different person once you've done that um, like it's incredibly inspiring and um, I'm lucky that I have a life that I can jump into these experiences with my friends and with my clients uh, so we're going to be doing on I don't know the exact date 16th okay <laughs> the 16th, so Sunday 7 16th of August 2020 we will be going we'll be in in Copenhagen and we'll be doing this crazy adventure together and my first Ironman after my accident so like I'm crazy crazy excited to do it with you like oh it's just gonna be next level but that's not why you're here it's not why I wanted to interview I want to interview you because of two things one your insane 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 work ethic to the point that you know as a coach you know Usain's Bolt's coach isn't faster than him actually he's a old overweight fat Jamaican man but he gives a different perspective and the beauty of a coach is you're not always better than the people you work with in some areas your clients are way better than you and when it comes to work ethic bro you inspire the crap out of me every day like it's crazy inspiring and I really want to share that in our conversation share you know your work ethic your determination your passion your uh, your passion to service to serving your family to serving yourself to serving your business obviously the success of your business we can start and just you can do an introduction of that but then the second thing I want to share is where you've come from you know to that I think will be the, the most powerful thing I think we've this is almost I told you before there's no preparation for this and I love what we've done we've done a small significant thing the Iron Man and then we're going to talk next about okay where are you now and then go into the deep stuff which is okay for me to go or for, for, me, for you to understand where I am you've really got to understand where I come from and that is the real power hour conversation is that cool totally cool let's go for it Absolutely. okay so first of all uh, I, I see you uh, you are successful in your own right uh, do you want to share just a bit about Armida, your business, what you do, what your life looks like day to day? Okay, yeah. So <coughs> um, over the last last ten years, I've bought, uh, I've built a um, property management business in the UK. Um, we turn over six million uh, pounds. We now we now are very fortunate enough to uh, start working across Europe, um, and we work in outsourcing effectively. Um, so clients come to us um, to manage their uh, environments, buildings, manufacturing plants schools um and effectively anything where um anything where you know a client requires uh, something outside of their skill set so you mm. know we're in the we're in the outsourcing business um and actually to a high degree we're all we're all in that in that game where we 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 bring in or outsource skills that we either have or haven't haven't got. Yeah, but even so, on a personal level. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. in this relationship here, and from a from a coaching perspective, mm. you know, I'm I'm outsourcing you know that element because that's extremely important to um to me, and that's a skill set I haven't got. Yeah. Um. So you know, to a large degree, you know, all of us, you know, to, to varying degrees, are in that are in that business. I um I love what you just said about we're all outsourcing skills that we don't have, and you have a business in that. And even on a personal level, uh, you still are outsourcing. And like, I think it was, I shared this with you the other day, I think it was Kobe Bryant or someone, um, obviously the late Kobe Bryant now, maybe it wasn't Kobe Bryant. It LeBron was James, I think. LeBron yeah. James, I knew it was a basketball yeah. player. He spends $1.5 million yeah. on having people around him, on outsourcing yeah. things like his nutrition, yeah. his health, um, you know, doing um, ice, uh, cold therapy and stuff. And uh, actually that inspired the UFC fighter Conor McGregor to say, man, I'm not spending that kind of money on myself. We're outsourcing those skills. So I'm end up, I'm trying to do everything on my, on my own. Yeah. And that's not necessarily the way forward. So with your clients, they recognize obviously that me doing this is not the most, uh, the best way to do it. Yeah, so they come to you to yeah, outsource totally. the management of everything <coughs> that they need on their property. Exactly. Yeah. And how, what is the day-to-day? -day what does day-to-day look like for you? Wow, uh, that can be anything from um, 
meeting a potential client, spending time with my senior management team. I'm very fortunate I get to travel a lot. Um, Did you say unfortunate? No, fortunately. Fortunate, yeah. No, fortunate. I get to I get to travel a lot. Um, I get a huge um, huge sense of satisfaction and uh, serving others. So being in you know being we're you know we're effectively in the, in the customer service business. So you know, being able to spend um, spend time with people um, and businesses supporting them mm. gives me you know, a huge sense of satisfaction, whether that be directly from myself or one of my one of my teams. Um, and actually, you know, to be honest, that banks us me out of bed pretty early every morning. So you would say serving people yeah, gets you out yeah. of bed. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <sighs> Did you always know that, or is it something that you made? yourself become you know what i mean like a lot of people have to be taught that if you serve others if you live i, I do this for a living you yeah know? part of what i do is i teach people in a one-to-one -one or a one-to-many environment that if you live your life in service you'll have more energy you'll have more passion more obsession is this has this always been part of your dna or did you well train yourself to be like this i was i was really i was really fortunate to have two extremely supportive Parents, I come from a very working class background, and and, and respect and support were mm. sort of two key cornerstones stones of my upbringing. So that was extremely normal to, to me to go out your way to support anybody. Mm. Um, was just the way that it's just the way that I brought up. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And I've always been a, I've always been an effort guy. I was you know very average student at school, um, and to get anywhere and do anything, I always had to you know work harder than. Than most of my classmates, and that just became just you know a, a fact. So let's let's talk about how hard you work. Brady was just saying to me that obviously this is before we worked together. That in the past he might literally work all through the night, have a pizza, and literally work without any sleep, and go to work the next day. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not I'm not absolutely not advocating that, but there's a there's a no, there's but it's a, the a time and a place. All, it's yeah, completely being all in, all in yeah. thing, yeah. And you know, the reason why we work together is because you don't want to have that, you know, or have those rituals in your life anymore. So you really, you know, our relationship professionally is based on you know you wanting to be the world champion of your life. Like yep. Lewis Hamilton has the right te team around him and the right people. You've created your own team of people, yep. um, and you know, I understand. That I'm only one of the people in that team but it's to go away from how you were living or operating, should we say that, so that you can start to operate at a higher level, yeah. a higher performance. Yeah. But you did do those things and you did it because you were all in. Yeah. Like you're willing to do, you have a very, I like what you said, you're very binary. You're either in or all the way in or all the way yeah. out. You really have a mentality of uh, doing whatever it takes. Yeah. Do you think, First of all, have you have you done this for a long time? Like yeah. to do whatever it takes, no yeah. sleep, whatever. And do you think it has been at the expense of anything? Yeah, sure. I think you know when you when you choose to live your life by a code, no matter what, then once you've set yourself a you know a goal or a credo or whatever, there's there's going to be an inevitable fallout from that. And actually, the reason you know one of the main reasons that I got in contact with you is because I didn't want um, balance. I wanted the opportunity to be able to excel in all areas of my life. Mm. Uh, and anybody, in my opinion, anybody can be successful in you know one or two areas. You know, That's you know, so true, you man. know, mastery tw ten thousand hours invested in anything. You, you know, anybody can given an, an, you know the, the amount of time and resources can become pretty good. If I, if we did this you know five thousand times in the next six months, you know, we get pretty. Pretty good at it, wouldn't mm. we? Or yeah, you know, or anything. You've been doing this. You've been doing this a long time. This feels very comfortable. I've you know I've, I've never done this before. This feels, yeah. this feels very uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> yeah, be, be, you know, being completely transparent. So, yeah, yeah. Is that um, is 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 that is that always been there? Yes. Is, is that always worked for me? Absolutely. That was ingrained from school. You know, my my mother was extremely extremely supportive of me, um, and became that inner voice from a very 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 young age. Um, and I grew up believing that I could achieve anything. Man, you you know, like, mm. I know your upbringing wasn't perfect, but m mine wasn't either. I'm sure most people's upbringings no. aren't perfect. You know, there's always something that you could wish. Yeah, we're all surviving our childhoods, aren't we? Exactly. You're all there's something you always wish you could be different, but you're so lucky to be fed that belief yeah. of I yeah, can yeah. do anything. Yeah. Um, my mum made me feel like Superman every single day. 
and I was, you know, I was never, you know, and we were we were talking about this previously that, you know, you don't have to be the most intelligent, you don't have to be the strongest, you don't even you have to be the fastest. You have to be always have to be the person that can endure, no matter what, and have that resolve and that drive just to keep going and going and going. It's that we talk about that Homer Simpson effect, you know. Eventually, most people will just get fed up. And you'll be the only person in that arena and be the only person in the ring because everyone else has gone home they're sleeping they're eating they're enjoying they're enjoying themselves you know whatever you know whatever metaphor you want to use but See, this is why i spend time mm. with this guy <laughs> um you know that's um i just took a deep breath whenever i'm inspired i'm just like <sighs> and you know you're just you're so correct like i think and a lot of people will disagree with this because they'll say oh you know life shouldn't have to be like that. you shouldn't have to work all that hard and i get that yeah but if you really want something bad enough rather than wishing for it um, man you know um visualizing feelywizing all that stuff if you're just willing to do what not anyone else is willing to do eventually because you're putting in more work more effort um, being more consistent than anyone else, you're going to get yeah, the yeah, result. Absolutely. Like it's not, you know, what I mean, <coughs> I it's most not esoteric. Like you don't no. have to, uh, you know, not understand how it works. You just keep practicing. Like no, stuff. No, it's, pra it's, it's practical. Yeah. Like it's just keep putting in more effort than anyone yeah, else. Yeah, absolutely. So th yeah. I think um, Jim Rohn or Zig Ziglar, somebody said, you know, if I, you know, if in, in a cell situation, if I've got a, um, you know, if I've got a ten percent hit rate and you've got a fifty percent hit rate. Um, and and you make ten calls, and your hit rate is you know thirty or forty percent, um, whatever it is. I know I just need to make More three calls. or four times as many calls than you. I'll see yeah. it. That's the game. It can still yeah. beat you. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't it doesn't matter. And actually, you know that level of intensity and resolve can be at points uncomfortable to to be around. Mm. But you know, listen, we most of us live in the mm. Western world on average statistically for twenty eight thousand two hundred days. We've got a choice every single day when we get up. What are we going to do with it? I don't want to waste any single minute of my mm. of my, any of my days. So there'll be some people at this point of watching this video or listening to this on the podcast will be thinking, ah, oh, but he's obviously not married and he doesn't know what it's like to have kids. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. well, yeah. So I, you know, I've been with my my partner Taya for twelve years. Yeah, um, we finally got engaged at Christmas. <laughs> um, I've got two um, beautiful children. Uh, Isla's four and Harper turn one last literally, week literally like literally at the time when they require the most attention and energy yeah it's, it's you're tough, yeah. you're still able to have this uh, relentlessness about you would you agree i know you i know the answer to this but i just want to talk about it that you being able to keep showing up in this way is not about you not being married or not having kids or not being in a relationship where you are people are dependent on you it's having these people 100 percent behind what you're doing yeah absolutely 110 percent. and yeah. actually it's about you know it's about um it's about serving it's about supporting and actually um tay and i have conversations all the time in terms of you know what do i need and what does she need and we're yeah. completely transparent about that and sometimes you know both of us have to have sort of difficult conversations but my children sleep for 12 hours every night, every day, seven days a week. So I've got 12 hours every day, seven days a week. Do that so. So, so ir irrespective, yeah. it'd be very easy to say, you know, I've got a young, I've got a young, I can't do this because, because, because. Oh, you've got because. a great excuse. Yeah. Yeah, and it's beautiful, you know, it's wrapped around your family, it's wrapped around love, it's wrapped around serving your family. Yeah, absolutely. But you still don't use it as an excuse. No. And actually, you know, I've got, a, you know, I've got, I've got a duty to them, you know, I want to be a, a great role model for for my yeah. for my for my kids for my partner you know my 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 partner Taylor inspires me every single every single day and you know and, and women are you know unbelievably powerful mm. um if i may say because i really hope that she watches this but every single time we speak about Taylor, you always get emotional yeah because you love her that much mm. um I, I haven't met her yet. I've only met her on camera. <laughs> I can't wait to meet her. Uh, but Jules and I are the same. I we're not perfect. We've come close to splitting up. Yeah. But so. um, I totally recognise that, and I know, you know, on a deep, deep level, that if I'm going to keep being all in in my life, because I have been for many years, the person that I choose to be with, not out of necessity. 
the person that I choose to be with has to be behind me 100%. And to everyone li listening, you know, that's not, it's not easy. It's not, oh, you find someone that, oh yeah, they're 100% in and supporting me. No, it's honest conversations again and again and again yep. and understanding each other. Would you agree? Absolutely. And, and, Keep and looking to understand each other through cl clarity. Yeah. And, and it's, as, and it's a, a never ending commitment. And any, anyone that's been in a long term relationship knows this. It's a never ending commitment to be more and to show up for them mm. every, sing, every single day. And do we get it right every time? No. I like that. A commitment not just to showing up, but to be more. Yeah, absolutely. And showing up. My, my grandparents have been married like 55 years now. And, you know, any time there's an opportunity to talk to someone that's been married for that length of time, you always ask them, you know, what is the secret of, of being happily married for that long, you know, that, that period of time? And it's always respect mm. and it's always communication. You have to be, we, want, we all want respect to be Respect and communication. Yeah. So a lot of people say, oh, you've just got to compromise. <coughs> I don't like that. No, I, I, I don't like the word compromise. What I say is you have to have mutual respect for each other. Yes. Because if you're compromising, you're also compromising on yourself. But if you have mutual respect for each other, it means that, you know, if you have a really good relationship and you have amazing respect for each other, it means you can do you and take and do take. Or I can do myself and Jules can do herself in different ways, but we respect and don't judge yeah, each absolutely. other for that. Um, yeah. And it's ultimately knowing what, you know, and, be, and being really honest about, you know, what, you know, what she needs or what I need. And sometimes that can be really, really uncomfortable. Yeah, but not being seen and not yeah. not being heard. I'm uh, I'm very difficult to be with, but also I want to live a not a normal life, uh, and I don't for one second uh, expect Jules to find that easy, you know, because it must be very difficult. But you you know we've spoken a couple of times now about being all in. You're also all in on your family. Yeah, and I just want to you know celebrate you f just for a minute, you know, and saying that. Uh, you know, for anyone watching that okay, now should we've shared, Brady has a family, has a, a partner of 12 years, he has kids, he's got, you know, he's close to his family, he runs a bloody business, he's a, cho you know, charge of the business. You've got all the excuses in the world for you not showing up for yourself, but you still show up for yourself. You're still all in. Not only are you all in in yourself, meaning that you will, you will not have any sleep. And you'll message me at four something or five a.m. being like, "I'm on my way to the gym." And, you know, I just I hope you know that ninety nine percent of the world don't operate like that, and unfortunately, a lot of the world will never operate like that, regardless of how they've been coached or mentored or guided. Um, and that's just incredibly inspiring. But also, to the fathers out there, I hope this inspires you. You will go to the end of the earth to take care of your children. And you've told me that just to get your daughter to sleep, you will get up in the middle of the night and you will drive around just until she can fall asleep. Is that correct? Do I get the story correct? Like who does that? Like you're a super, not only are you superhuman, not only are you super resilient, but you're a super fucking dad, man. And that's, uh, I really hope that by me sharing that, there's nothing for you to say on that. I just hope that it really inspires some dads and moms to get up off their arse, arse and be better, I th I think, because I think, it is possible. I think if you talk to any um, any dad um, that says that they haven't found a deep, meaningful respect for their wife or girlfriend or partner when they have a family, um, that's just not gonna, it's not going to happen. Every 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 single dad feels such deep respect and and, and, have, and gratitude. I have to disagree on that because my father kicked me and my mother out when I was six years old, and he he rented a flat and told us to get out of the house. Right. And um, okay. so my father wasn't like you. So I've seen both sides of the spectrum. The other side, the lesser side, uh, is my father. And I don't judge my father. My father had his own stuff. We discussed this before. Everyone does everything for a reason. But uh, you are the other side of that spectrum. You know, you are, I hope to be a, a, a father soon. And you are, you know, a role model to me when it comes to being a parent. So, you know, you live this uh, all in life. You're all in your business. Your business is just going up and up and up. You're just getting more opportunities. You're all in on your personal life. Uh, 
but it might sound to some people like oh it's just easy for him you know he's obviously been uh, trained or molded in a way for him to think like this you know your upbringing was quite different and obviously just you know you don't have to share everything but looking at how your life is now did you think growing up as a kid that your life would be like this no. what if i may ask what were you thinking if you can bring yourself back to being a kid let's say in school in primary school what were you thinking about your future I either thought I was going to be an electrician like my dad, or I was going to be, you know, I wanted to be an actor at one point, and I wanted, you know, at one point I wanted to be a, a veterinary nurse or a vet. Um, I loved animals. I grew up around a lot of animals. We always had, you know. So we're both vegan. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, so we, we connect on so many. Yeah. Levels. So there's yeah. been a, a big old, you know, a, a big old bank turn in terms of in terms of, in terms of nutrition over the last the last the last five or six years. But you know, I, I, you know, I've, I come from a very you know, and I'm very proud of that. Come from a very working class background, and family support one, one another, and, and families just endure and mm. and crack on and do the best, the very best that they can. And my parents did the absolute very best that they could for me and my um, me and my sister. But there was certainly never there was certainly never any talk of. Um, you know, I, I never thought in a million years that I'd be doing. It wasn't even to be honest. It wasn't even in my sphere. Of, so it wasn't even no. living a high performance success life like wasn't even in your consciousness I didn't have any of those role, role, you know, I didn't have any of those role models I wouldn't have even known what that looked like that would have been for somebody else I didn't, you know I, didn't, yeah. I just you know I, I was <coughs> I grew up very close to my grandparents and their, yeah, their generation was very much you, know, you um, sort of know your station in life yeah. and that's where so you're at so it was at. really about just survival and like just live a general life whatever yeah. when, when did things start to switch for you when did you tap into a growth mindset or a a personal development mindset when, when i was um when i was 18 i was i was training to be a um electrical uh, electrical engineer i was working at a power station at the time um and my uh, my job was to uh warm up the site cabin before everyone turned up uh, on on site and i was responsible for like 40 guys at, the, at that point but because i was the youngest um you always got the sort of the apprentice site jobs as well so you know putting the kettle on and warming up the site cabin and making mm -hmm. sure the clothes are, you know all the overalls and stuff are driving the night before and because I um because I'd get in there so early um I um I found a book completely completely by coincidence if I'm honest um just sat at home sort of googling and I found two books one was um Awaken the Entrepreneur Within by Michael Gerber mm -hmm. and the second one was um Napoleon Hill Sinking Grey Rich and that turned something on it's never gone off and that was 15 years ago so that's crazy that let's call it the first book you read was thinking grow rich yeah right even though you said it second yeah but the now you know let's say over a decade later you ended up just recently in a school speaking in a school and gifting that book yeah. to how many kids so it's about 400 kids yeah. 400 kids how cool is that man and honestly, it, was very, yeah, it, was, it felt really cool, yeah. Um, really cool. To be able to do that is a real gift, to be able to give back through your own journey. You know, you, you use that thing to learn in your own life and you're able to give that tool or that gift back yeah, to absolutely. other people. I mean, and that comes down to service again, well, right? To give back. I, I, I've got this thing that I wanna, I wanna set up um, scholarships for kids with very, uh, you know, very average um, ab ability. Mm. For that to really develop in them that sense of um, persistence, that sense of um, that sense of belief, and in my opinion, and I suppose I'm going to say that because that's where that's 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 where I where I come from. Mm. You know, the the iron and, and the metal is 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 built and developed in those putting in those hard yards, and the, and the kids with average intelligence or your less intelligent always have to work harder than, every, than everybody else so yeah. the top tier universities and, and colleges where um you know the most the, you know, the, 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 the most intelligent people that are going to you know oxford cambridge wherever they're not going to be they're not going to be the leaders of tomorrow it's easy come it's easy go they're in, they're in, they're intelligent school life was easy universities is very easy you don't get the type of muscle that you have to build brick by brick day by day over 10, 15, 20 years 
by by by, by those sorts. And nothing wrong, nothing wrong with that. But the but to be able to pick no, those people it. out, yeah. I was very fortunate that that I've had some people that have really that have really believed in me, whether at that point I deserved it or not. I was very 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 fortunate. But there's, mm. there there are thousands of other kids where that is absolutely not the case. And I and I could have quite easily gone into it. And, and again, I'm not downplaying you know you know you know a normal job. There's, there's mm. nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that either. But if there's that sense of no, but it's if you, that's what you really, exactly. really, really exactly. want to do, and most of us not settle. settling, yeah, yeah, exactly, because we think we should look like this, or we should yeah. we should be that, or society prescribes that this is how our mm. life's gonna, you know, like, gonna turn out. I say, abs- you know, absolutely, you know, no. Mm. So to be able to, you know, pick out from that that pool, you know, you know, you know, you know, a, a set aside, you know, you know, a million a million pound scholarship every year for you know a hundred. 100 kids or 150 kids from sort of all across the all across the, the UK to be able to to be able to do that that's an absolute no-brainer and the world would be you know the, the you know the country and the economy and you know all that sort of stuff if we were able to tap in to that metal that's got that is, that is developed mm. and you know kids that put it's like anything you know life is about persistence and effort yeah, and that's why I go all out and max out in absolutely everything. And th- that's the man. It's very powerful. I really hope that you can watch this back one day and go, man. You know, that's you know a conversation I had about creating this thing that was going to make an impact or a difference. But hopefully, when you watch it back, you've already created that thing. Um, you know what? I agree with you so so much. I think whether you call it uh, determination, resilience, being willing to work incredibly hard for what you want. Not working, I don't believe in working incredibly hard and in doing something that you don't enjoy doing. Life's too yeah, short. Totally I almost right, yeah. lost my life at 38 years old. So, but if you're willing to, if you're able to find the thing that you love, you most enjoy, that makes you come alive, makes you jump out of bed in the morning, if you work harder than anyone else, it's like there's no guesswork there. You can just make it happen. And if you look at leadership, right, the greatest leaders in the world are the ones that absolutely love doing what they're yep, doing. They totally. love from the heart, not from the head. So if you can tap into kids, and by the way, I, you know, that's all I needed as a kid. I just needed someone yeah. to show me a way out. That's the point. Isn't it? That's I just needed someone to give me hope, to give me faith. <coughs> to, if I had someone say, it doesn't matter what you're going through right now. It doesn't matter about the bullying. It doesn't matter about the abandonment. It doesn't matter about the being judged. If you just work, if you find the thing you love and you work harder than anyone else, I promise you, it's on its way. That would have been a a pivotal moment in my life. Uh, So if you can create that for other kids, I mean, that's very, very powerful. How was school for you? Hated it. Tough. Being Being the outsider... In any situation. Why are you the outsider? Um, I went to school in an affluent, um, an affluent area. My my, my parents. Um, so going back to what you said, they always did their best, and they put you in a great school. Yeah, so, yeah. So it was yeah. it was a it was a it was a it was a state school, but yeah, um, it's too late now. They're not they're not going to get um, they're not going to get told off at this point. <laughs> Fifteen days, but they 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 gave a they gave a false address and said that we lived in a. In a, in, a, in, a, in a nicer nice. area than we did. Um, so for the first uh, 12 incredible. months of school, I had to pretend that we lived in an area where we, where we didn't, <laughs> in an area that I didn't even, didn't, didn't even know in an hour to get, you know, an hour on the bus every day um, in an environment that I didn't know where nobody was. You know, oh, nobody so where was, was like, the you know, bus taking you to? To school. But but from where you really live. Yes. Right, yeah, yeah. So yeah, no, exactly. one, no one was like, why is he going there? No, 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 yeah, exactly right. that. Yeah, so it was the whole thing, you know, getting off two stops before and walking down, oh, as right. a, you know, so. It was it, it was it was an absolutely bonkers time, but they were wow. they were absolutely trying to trying to do their best. But you know, I I was very different. I sounded very different. Mm. My you know, my parents' background and our level of social status was you know wildly different than the vast majority mm. of people at that school. Um, so yeah, it was, and that has an impact. You know, kids can be cruel. Kids yeah. can be really cruel. So you know, I spent a lot of time hiding in toilets in the dark for and eating my lunch on the toilet for you know. What what would you say to to that kid that was hiding in toilets and um, isolated or you know, choosing to isolate themselves? What would you say to to that boy, you, now looking back? Every single one of those experiences are going to make you who you're going to become, yeah. and you need to you need to you need to grow through and go through all of it. But everything 
everything will be absolutely everything will be absolutely fine and then actually do you know what you know we've all we've all got a story haven't we but the um you know there were some um yeah some really bloody really tough times at that point and to be honest because the, the effort that my parents had put in to get me into that school i never felt that i could really you know talk to them about that or the bullying or just said, the episodes up. that you know the stuff that happened on the school but you know there's a lot of stuff there was you know there was older kids that were you know, yeah you know we get you know kicked around on a daily basis but that was, that was sort of that was sort of the way it, that was sort of the way it, the way you know, the, the, the way it was for a period so of for, for, for a period me of time. i mean you know already i got bullied most of my school years i had a few it felt like a month here or months there that i was like wow i'm actually enjoying school now but generally it was the only consistent thought in my head was when is school over yeah 10 years left nine yeah. years left eight years left i just i remember being six years old and thinking of the last year of school when i'd be 18 wow. and thinking man i can't wait to be there because i just want to be out um i thought a lot of things when i was there at that time in my life what were you thinking then for me for example all i all i kept thinking is why do I get this life and other kids have that life? Like, why is life happening to me? You know what I mean? It felt very much about, like, life's not a gift. It didn't feel like a gift to me. It felt like life is just something you survive through. I didn't think I, I maybe ever articulated it like that, but I, it was, you know, get through to 3.15 and get home. I always felt very safe at home. Mm. I had a one, you know, I've got you know, a wonderful mother. Uh, she made me feel very safe. I didn't feel safe there, you know, not in any way, sh shape, mm. or form. And um, and it was, you know, getting through. So, you know, break times and meal times were always really difficult. Um, I didn't like being in situations where, you know, I had to sort of, you know, mingle with the other, yeah. other kids and stuff. So lessons were great because, you know, nobody was, you could just, you know, you were there taking part in the lesson. Mm. But, you know, you know, break times and lunch times and then getting to the school bus were always, you know yeah traumatic an experience yeah but again but again looking back you know you know thousands of kids go through that sort of stuff but i was you know but actually as the as the years went on i got more confident i found you know i found, I found my feet mm. um i ended up gravitating to you know a small group of people that were you know a little bit more like me but sort of similar backgrounds and stuff and yeah um, you found your people. Yeah, and you know, you know, I got to sort of fifteen, sixteen, and felt, felt, yeah, you know, felt accepted. Yeah. Saying, saying that you've turned your life around, I think, is um, not an understatement, but it, it doesn't really do it justice because there's so much of you that I can't share in one video, but. You know, you've really, you've gone to work on yourself, you've gone to work on your life, and you, your life is very much working for you today. Would you agree? Your life life ha is not happening to you yeah, anymore. Absolutely. Like, yeah. life is happening for you. And one of the things that I really believe helps people to keep being all in on their future um, is a vision of their future. Um, you are very much a student of life. You are actually we're in London right now because you're about to spend three days with the incredible, insane Dr. John D. Martini. But what is for you to keep growing and for keep becoming more, like you said, what for you is next? Like what do you, you said in school you went from where you were then you became more confident. Um, you said that you know, up in your childhood, you didn't have a growth mindset or a success mindset until uh, you read this book. Where are you now and what's next for you in terms of you keep growing yourself? That's a really interesting question. I think there's, there's, no, there's no one single answer to that if I'm being, if I'm, if I'm being so completely So what's the honest. first thing that comes to your mind or your heart? The, 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 the physicality of the Ironman triathlon mm. is is huge for various for various reasons because when you when you're driven primarily by fear rather than self belief this is good <laughs> um, you tend to work hard because you're shit scared that you're going to lose it all tomorrow and I'm not mm. just talking about you know from a business perspective everything um, that is 
an exhaustive way of living, a very yeah. a very toxic and, and unhealthy way of living. And I've operated the vast majority of my adult life, if I'm being completely honest, in that space. Wow. And it and you know and it's and it's and it's and it's tough. So when you know when people say you know you, you work crazy hours and you're, you're you're doing this and doing that, you know a lot, a lot of that comes from you know particularly with childhood stuff. Most of us feel like we're not enough, don't we? Mm. Or some of us, you know, I, I've I've certainly operated from that space for a long period of time where I didn't I did feel like for a very long time didn't feel like I was good enough. Um, I was had to try harder than everybody else. I didn't deserve this. I didn't deserve that. Who am I to want X, Y, and Z? Who am mm. I to have this? You know, wonderful partner. At what point is this all going to go terribly, terribly wrong? And yeah. it has completely gone. You know, we've had. You know, the the business went through a very difficult period three years ago. We lost a huge amount of money. We nearly went into. You know, we nearly went. Um, uh, nearly went into liquidation. Yeah, it was. It wow. was a. Um, it's a very, very tough time, um, but invariably, without it sounding too cheesy, life's not about what happens. It's about it's about what, how you dig yourself out of it, mm. and you know the, the 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 belief that we can be more and we can deserve more, and actually, by allowing ourselves to operate from that space, we empower everybody around us to operate yep. in the same space, yep. same space yep. too. That's why the world needs more inspirational leaders, people that are being inspiring. Yep. Because when you're being inspiring through belief, through practice, through the way you show up in the world, you show other people how to do the yep. same. And, and dude, you're inspiring yep. so many people. And, 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 and it's not, and it's, you know, it, for any of us, it's not coming from a place of ego. Um, it's coming from a place of being able to look in the mirror every morning and doing your fucking best. Mm. Doing your best every single fucking day i love that you say doing your best because i often say to people every day is not about being the best uh, because they don't you'll never have a life Absolutely. ever ever where you can be the best mm -hmm. but if you can do your best regardless of whether your best today is 10 percent, maybe you've had a really bad day today and tomorrow you just have seven percent capacity you got to give all of that seven yep. percent uh, because that eventually will become part of your dna it's, own, it's, it's, own, it's ownership and, and, and really, really owning, our, own, owning ourselves. I, I'm not judging, but I don't have time for people that aren't willing to own where they are, to own their life. Just to come back to what I said, what's next for you? It sounds like what you've said, the next thing for you is even though acting from fear and being relentless to get away from what you're afraid of, it served you for a very long time. And now you're looking to transition to a higher level of, of being, yep. which is to act from belief purely yes. and to not act from fear. And look, becoming a, becoming a dad yeah. really, um, really shifted me into a different, a different space with that, you know, being honest, that was that, you know. I, I, In what way? We, um, you know, we, be, we become the sum total of our, um, you know, our five most, um, the five people we spend the most time with. I'm a dad. I've got two children. They're going to be heavily influenced by me. If I'm if I'm operating from oh, a place of fear, yeah. then you know that, that's that's not going to be. I don't, I don't want to instill that. You know, we yeah. all impart our shit on our on our kids to a to a to a to a degree. That's there, there's there's an inev mm. inevitability of that. But what we can do is what what we can do is do our best. But from shifting from a place of fear to a place of growth, and, and again, you know, it's very easy to say. You know that that's very selfish, or that's very egotistical, or that's you know, uh, you know that's fine for you or whoever else. But that, mm. yeah, that's not something that is is doable for me. We've all got a story. We've all we've all got stuff yeah. we struggle with. We've all got anxiety. You know, we've all got imposter syndrome. We've all got you know, even on the train on the way down this morning, you know, the thought of you know <laughs> yeah. doing this interview I was just thinking, you know, why the hell would you want to talk to me? Well, why? This is why the last. 40 minutes or whatever is exactly why but, but, but there's also you know the, 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 the most of us if we can own, if we can own that and we can we can absolutely show stay in anyway. our power exactly to so have your story but show up yeah. anyway one of my great role models and mentors Miss Lisa Nichols says stand on your story not in your story yeah spot on yeah like you know talk about your story as if it's the past yeah you know, not that you're still stuck in your story. Because yeah. you and I know too many people talk about this story years later as if it's still happening. Yeah. Yeah, that, that whole thing, your past doesn't have to equal your, your future and you know, the, you know you don't, you don't, your, your past doesn't, doesn't own you. And, and look, you know, mm. none, of us are, none of us are perfect. We're all students of life, 
we're all just mm. doing our best but all of us are just doing our best aren't we and, and even when i hope so but well, I, I find anyway you can be in the in, in the shit in, in, in the shittiest situation but if you can operate from a place and, and you've spoken about this so many times mm. you know from zero expectation and move from a place of yeah. appreciation and actually having your mind that all of us are just doing the best we can with the tools that we've got that doesn't make you know him better than her or or me wrong and you right it just is yeah and we're just being and we're all just trying to figure this stuff out and we're all trying to navigate our way through you know this complicated world that we yeah. find ourselves in for an unbelievably short period of time that we're we're here in mm -hmm. you know in the history of the universe you know it's a, it's a nano set gone we're in we're out done yeah. but while we're here i believe we've got a an, a responsibility to give it everything and be the very ah, best yes. person that we can absolutely, that we can be dude. absolutely i could keep talking to you about this stuff for hours and hours I am very blessed that uh, I get to spend a lot of time with you. Uh, you know, we've just done a workout today. We've done this. We've done a coaching session. We're going to chat after this. You're going to give me some business advice on something that I'm working on. Uh, I have one. I'm going to use the bathroom. <laughs> I have one more thing I want you to share, um, and uh, it'll it'll be quick, I okay. think. But if you could have your kids, Isla and Harper, watch mm. this video back 10 years from now and then see a message that you left them. What message would you want to leave them right now? Don't ever give up. Don't ever give up. <laughs> That's fucking awesome, dude. Regardless of what, um, yeah, and life, life's supposed to chuck stuff at us and regardless of whatever your religious or spiritual beliefs are we're here to grow aren't we that's, that's what we're in my opinion that's what that's what that's what we're here and your 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 blood family might not be your your your, your soul family your family are there to push your push your buttons are there to mm -hmm. there to support you to grow however frustrating our parents or siblings or you know might might, might yeah. be that's that that, that that it just is it just it, it just it just it just is what it is but to believe you're no worse than anybody else or no better than anybody else mm. but you genuinely can be anything you want to be and not in this esoteric you know voodoo you know chanting you know yeah. styley but if, if you commit to being more every single day and the very best very best version of yourself every single day some really really cool stuff will eventually happen and life starts happening girls if you're listening to this just outside your comfort zone if you're not, if you don't feel, if, if I don't feel um, anxious, is probably the wrong word, but if I don't feel uncomfortable, I tell my teams all the time, we need to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Mm. Life isn't supposed to be comfortable. We don't come into the world comfortable. Chasing comfort. Yeah. yeah. Birth is tough. Life is tough. You know, and that De whole circle. Death is tough. Exactly. Yeah. So this whole thing. You come into this, man, I've never heard that before. You come into this world uncomfortable, you leave uncomfortable. Totally, absolutely. So absolutely. stop trying to be comfortable. Totally, you, you, that's not what life is about. So it's to, about to challenge growth. Exactly, yeah. and to expect it to be easy mm. and expect you know, to operate from a place of, whoa me, my life's really tough because yeah. of X, Y, and Z. That's the gig. Dude, you inspire me in your work ethic, in your the amount of check-ins that I get from you. I've never seen someone i've never worked with anyone honestly in my whole career i've been doing this all of my adult life that is so committed to themselves because as you know checking in with me is checking, checking in with, with you, you baby <laughs> yeah. uh, you you inspire me with your heart your vulnerability uh, the way you are with your family and the way you want to serve people all the time uh, it's an absolute pleasure spending time with you and um let's keep going on this journey together man we're just picking up the last point on that on that on that vulnerability thing you know being and i know we've got to finish but just that just that final there's that final point being feeling comfortable being vulnerable mm. is the most powerful thing that's been you one, can possibly yeah. and actually I found <coughs> I found over the years when I'm working with somebody or you know I'm I'm in proximity to someone who is allowing themselves to be vulnerable I feel validated that I can be me yeah I can be completely me because this person is opening themselves up warts and all 
to you know to me to, in terms of who, who, the, who in terms of who they are. So the vulnerability piece it's not about sort of putting this mask on every day and going out there and just killing it and working fifteen hours. It's, I'm it's sure about my, being you. I'm sure my clients, students, friends, followers, fans, tribe, family members online will all agree with you because. A lot of messages that I get from people all around the world are, yes, it's you're inspiring, but also you thank you for being so honest, for being so vulnerable, for being so open and raw. And um, like you said, us doing that gives people permission and the freedom to do yeah, the absolutely. same. And that's when you can get truly out of your own way. You know, If you're not willing to be vulnerable and be seen for who you really are, can you really ever own your life? Yeah. I don't think you can. No. Anyway, you're certainly owning it, dude. Thank Bro, you. I love you. You're Thanks inspiring, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, dude.